What's going on everybody? My name is Brandon Troy and I'm the lead programmer of the Mars 2088 development team. I've worked over the past seven months with four of my friends to develop this game as a project for the Technology Student Association at our high school. This video is a gameplay walkthrough and commentary, which we'll be submitting to the North Carolina Technology Student Association state competition for the video game design event. A couple of things before I begin. This game was created using the free open source game and software development platform known as Unity, which I'll be recording the playthrough in. All of the art, music, and code that was used in this game was created by and 100% owned by our team. And this game has taken hundreds of man hours to get it to where it is today. Also, I apologize in advance for the video quality. Unity and the recording software I'm using are both hefty applications and my PC isn't the best. Anyways, with that out of the way, let's hop right into it. This is the simple main menu we currently have for the game. Uh, you can see some background information about our team, play the game obviously, and close the application if you don't want to play for some strange reason. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So before the gameplay begins, we actually have this cinematic dialogue that plays to give the backstory and set the scene for the game. As you can see, it involves a background and a scrolling text animation that the player can walk through at their own pace. You can click the continue button while the text animation is playing in order to finish it, and after it's over to move on to the next segment. So I'll just click through it, and feel free to pause the video and read at your own pace if I go too fast. And at the very end, we just have a simple animation of the ship flying away to show kind of the game beginning. So as you can see, we have now entered level 1, and the player is uh, standing on kind of this Martian soil, and we can see what is presumed to be the uh, cockpit of his crashed ship, which will be explained in a little bit. But um, before we kind of move on, I just want to explain the movement. So. Essentially, you can either use the W, A, S, and D keys, or the arrow keys to move. So we have W is up, A is left, S is down, and D is right. Same thing with the arrow keys. Um, there's also, there's eight total directions of movement, so there's also diagonal directions. So you go up, diagonal, down, diagonal, left, diagonal, and then, so every single direction. Um, and uh, this, I want to think this uh, kind of weird looking thing in the corner is uh, the inventory preview and it's supposed to kind of be his backpack. So if we hover over it, it says it's the inventory and we can press E to open it or we can click this. If I click it, it um, opens up uh, and then just kind of what it looks like here, it says it's the backpack. And then we can also just press E to open and close it. Um, all right, with that out of the way, let's just move on. So I'm gonna walk over to the right here and I see, you see this weird little floating guy. So if I walk up to him, this um, kind of thought bubble with the F key and it pops up. And what this is, this is um, an interaction prompt. So throughout the game, there are multiple different types of interactions. And w uh, how they all work is this uh, interaction prompt will pop up and you simply just press F while you're in a certain range. So I have to be close enough that this is visible. And then I simply press F and it will activate the interaction. In this case, it uh, is to, it will trigger like a dialogue box. So if I simply press F, we can see uh, this guy's talking to us, so he says, Welcome to Mars. Uh, blah, blah, blah. He informs us that the, Marsh, the Martian, uh, Mars used to have a civilization and that it has collapsed, which is very interesting. So we just 
But one more thing, um, this dialog box, how it works is the uh, speaker has a profile picture, which would be on the left, and the listener has a profile picture, which would be on the right. It's just to make it perfectly transparent exactly who is talking to who, because some, at some point, uh, multiple characters are engaged in dialogue, which want to make it very clear. And obviously this continue button will allow you to go to the next, either exit it or go to the next kind of segment, if applicable. So if I just hit continue, I can click through this really quick. Obviously the player is quite confused by this information. Um, so this is kind of gives the backstory of what happened on Mars, and uh, we can kind of see the cause of the society's collapse, and that kind of gives a hint as to the theme of this game. So um, our educational theme was uh, on kind of the environment and global warming and kind of like giving an example of what could happen to Earth as this player, as you are discovering it on Mars. Um, is this is kind of like an example of what could, in theory, an extreme version of what could happen on Earth. And it's kind of just like a warning, gives you something to think about. But we obviously uh, it kind of just fuse that in some, you know, I, on a creative gameplay. Um, so anyway, let's just keep moving on. And as you can see, his name is Clyde. Um, and then he kind of confirms that we did actually have a crash landing over there. Um, and that we will need parts to fix our ship, probably, because you know, it makes sense. And... So uh, then he tells us that there's some fragments of our ship we can find nearby. Um, yeah, so Clyde, as you can see, he's uh, in. He pops up in our inventory now. He's in our backpack. Uh, he is now kind of like our artificial intelligence companion, and will help us out throughout the course of the game. You know, giving us some hints. The first kind of useful hint he told us was that there are some you know parts of our ship nearby we can find. And also, I know this uh, picture of him looks distorted in the video. That's because the um, Pixels per the um, re sorry resolution of the video is uh, lower than the resolution that the application is run at because you know it's slightly slower. Um, so if this looks a little distorted, that's why. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna start walking over. I'm gonna walk over here. Um, and as we can find our first part. Obviously, you can't. We're kind of like on a higher like a cliff side. You can't walk off or into these walls anywhere. Um, but yeah, so now we are next to this uh, ship part and. Same way with the inventory, we just press F and it will pick up the item. Clyde told us we did a good job, so thank you. Uh, and then it shows we have found one part in the inventory. And now I'll just keep moving. I will sorry, head down these stairs and follow this path to the left. And I see this kind of empty corner up here. I wonder if there's anything in it. Oh, and there is a part. So I will grab that same thing, press F. And we see we have two now. So start moving down and follow the path again. And oh, what's this? Weird thing. So we walk up to it. Clyde informs us it's a newspaper clipping, um, and then he's going to translate it for us. So he just kind of explains that it, uh, it's talking about emissions clogging the atmosphere, but that's all he can tell it says. And then he tells us to take it with us, so let's walk up. Same thing here, we press F and it will now go in our inventory, and he, uh, we can click on it in the inventory view to actually look, read what it says. So open up the inventory, and if I hover over this item actually, it gives a little um, preview, and then it says we can click to view it. So if I click, we are now viewing it. This is the title, and this is uh, what it says, so I'll just let you read that really quick. And again, this is kind of glowing along with our uh, educational theme. It's kind of like giving the player hints as they go along of, kind of like what actually happened with the global warming and kind of that environmental deterioration. So yep, and now I'll just close the inventory. And in my corner of my screen, I saw another part, so I'll grab that, pick it up, and kind of let us know that we have found all the parts for this area. So now we're gonna keep moving, and we find a door here. Clyde tells us to go in, so I'm just gonna walk into it, and we have a little transition to the next level. So now we have made it to level two, and uh, Clyde kind of informs us as soon as we load in that. Uh, he thinks we've stumbled upon some kind of an ancient bunker, and that's just kind of where that door led, so uh, we should 
explore all of it in case we find more parts and other cool stuff too okay so now um, I'm gonna keep moving and for, obviously I can't the store um, doesn't open that way so I can't walk out to the left I have to go to the right um, and I see this kind of through a intersection I want to explore everything but I'll just go up first and I come to this room at the top of these stairs and I see Clyde's a little confused. I wonder what's going on here too. Um, okay, so this is old furnishing and another newspaper clipping. Okay, so I'm just gonna check it up. Uh, check it out. Same thing. Press F to pick it up. And he's gonna explain. It's um, it's actually a graph showing temperatures and carbon in the atmosphere rising over time. Okay. Uh, so view by checking her backpack. So open the backpack. It's the second one. I still see the first one before over here. Uh, this one it shows the preview again and then let's click it to view so it populates in the same newspaper kind of background it's called temperature versus carbon emissions and it might look a little weird in the video but as you can see we have the carbon emissions in blue average temperature in red and they're both kind of rising pretty exponentially so that obviously can't be good for their environment and we're experiencing similar trends here um, anyway we're just gonna hop back out of the inventory and keep exploring this level so now I am going to go yes down um, into this kind of skinnier hallway. So the uh, windy path, go down some more stairs, um, and then we see this weird room. Uh, Clyde's saying, oh, "Nice, okay, we found some more parts." So we're gonna grab them, and as he said, keep moving. So um, I'm just gonna make my way back to where before. The stairs. Um, and okay, so now let's go to the right. And we see this strange thing. I'm just gonna pick it up and see what it says. So, Clyde informs us that it is a tool and it can be used to repair malfunctioning or broken objects. And he's added it to our tools menu. Oh, so this, this door is broken. We can, pair it with this new tool and so uh, these kind of four slots are used to hold, hold tools and then uh, the same thing there's a little um, description of what it does and then there's throw the tools we will find throughout the game um, also the parts were at five now uh, we found those two below so now I'm just gonna walk up to this new door and um, so another thing so um there are a couple more types of so doors um, are also a type of interaction and then uh, objects that need to be repaired are another interaction as well. So first, this door needs to be repaired. So this repair tool interaction pops up and how this works is first, it ex kind of explains uh, what is happening. So this circuit board is missing some wires and we can drag between the nodes, which are these white squares, to reconnect them with new wires and fix the circuitry. I can hit escape if I want to exit at any time. And then I'll go back in. So what I basically do is I click, start, I click on a square and I drag to create a wire and I can put this at any new square and then I'll start dragging a new wire and keep going through all of these. You can do it in one click or you can do it in multiple clicks. So just that. And then what you want to do is just reconnect the first wire and then this little animation of electricity flowing through it will happen. Um, and then now it's over and the door is lit up. It, it was uh, dark before. So this means, it, this means it's uh, working. So once it's working, it is now a door interaction. When I press F, it will have this opening animation, right? and we can uh, wait. We can walk only walk through once it's open. Can't go back. We can open it again if we want, but we'll just keep moving. Um, and then that's the end. So as you can see, we have now entered level three. And um, as soon as we get in, Clyde is a little confused because we see a robot over here. That's what at least it's supposed to be. Um, so we walk up and we can interact to engage in dialogue with him. So kind of welcomes us in. And I'll just play through that for you really quick. Oh yeah, so here, um, kind of explaining where we are. Um, this is supposed to be a uh, some kind of like a green energy plant that the Martian Society created as like a like sort of like a too little too late thing. Um, and these are supposed to be representing kind of like tubes full of like the some kind of like a liquid energy source that they're like you know harnessing or whatever. Um, and so yeah, and then um, 
It was the only one ever made because it never really received government funding, and uh, it was obviously too late as the Martian race, uh, Martian race fell uh, shortly after. Um, and it kind of explains that he was a maintenance robot for the plant, but obviously he's just been kind of sitting there for a long, long time, um, and he can't even move like throughout all of his track because he's covered up with boxes, which is kind of annoying. Um, and he asks if we can help him move them off. Uh, he offers a reward, which is pretty cool. And yeah, pretty heavy metal boxes. Might, might be pretty hard for a guy. So um, he's going to give us a little force tool, which can move objects no matter their size. That's awesome. Okay. So now he starts moving down his track and he drops the force tool here. We can pick it up. You can see it populates in our inventory preview and in our inventory. Um, and it can be used to move certain objects around. So cool. And um, so what's going to happen here is basically he moves along his track. And then as you move the box, he just keeps moving until he hits another box and he can't go any further. Um, and how you move the box is you just walk up to them and there is this kind of interaction prompt. You press F. And then now we're using the force tool. So we just click and drag the mouse to cast a force beam like this, kind of, it follows the mouse. And then we move the beam over the selected object, which has the particles emitting from it. And then it will uh, lock onto that object and then we move it with the mouse. So if I just drag over this, you see there's more particles now, slightly more, and we can just move, it will follow the mouse as well. And then we can just get escape to enter or exit that tool menu. So now we just move this box down, it keeps going. And over here we see a little uh, little newspaper clipping, it looks like. So uh, Clyde tells us, yep, another one newspaper. This one is about um, something to do with controversy between scientific leaders and economic leaders. So we can quickly view that in our inventory. Um, it's about corporate emissions, which makes sense. Um, quick view. And it's called The Case Against Silco Inc. And I'll just let you read this really quick, just pause. Um, the video and read your own pace and then move on from there. So we're just exile the inventory and keep moving these boxes off of the track. Again, just pressing F to um, activate the force tool and then dragging them to the side. Once they're all the way off the track, um, a robot can keep moving. Oh, and over here I noticed a little part so you can walk over in between these kind of tube things and uh, pick it up. We are now oh, we are now at six out of nine, which is pretty cool. So, some more boxes to go. Get that off to the side, and last one. So, uh, he congratulates us. Thank you. Um, Alright, we let him get to the end. Um, and our reward. An extremely rare coin from the peak of Martian society. Pretty cool. Ah, he's talking about how greed also caused the fall of the planet. He seems to be pretty emotional about that, which is sad, but um, that is another theme kind of we're hinting at, some, uh, something that exists on Earth. Um, you know, just something to think about, um, how it could be detrimental to their society and ours. Anyway, he's wishing us best of luck, and we're done talking to him. So now the coin, he drops the coin out, like same thing, we press F, pick it up, it populates in our inventory, and I'm talking to Clyde now. Yep, okay, on, let's keep going, and um, now the door is active, and we can press F to go through it, and yeah, that was all for level 3. So now we have entered level 4, um, and we can see some initial dialogue from Clyde, he's noticing this uh, door is not activated, and can fix it with the repair tool, so I'm just going to run over and interact with that repair tool. Same thing as before. I think I forgot to mention this before, but um, it does not matter at all the order you connect them in. Any, as long as all of them are like basically in a loop at the end, so I can start from here, I can go here, then there, 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 then there. I mean, that gets a little confusing, but this works. <laughs> so you have the same um, animation will play, and pop out. Is activated now you can see it lit up and we can walk through so okay um, he's telling us we need to navigate through these boxes um, and there's a 
building over the distance that we can't see yet, so I'm just gonna kind of walk my way through these. Um, again, if I need to, I can. Oh, I see a little part down here, so I'm just gonna pick that up really quick. Uh, okay, um, and now we're at seven, almost there. So now, oh, I see a little newspaper up here. I'm just gonna walk up and kind of so pull this box. I could, yeah, out of the way. Um, and pick this up. This was another graph um, showing population decrease. Okay, um, so if I walk in, I see this new article, some decrease in large population. Um, it's called population versus time, and wow, that is pretty dramatic. You can see throughout the years. Um, it's pretty sad, all because of the environment becoming unstable. Uh, okay, and I'm just gonna keep going through these boxes. You can also slowly push them, um, but obviously the force tool is the best way to do that. And now this door already works, so we can walk through. And um, Claude's talking to us now. So he's letting us know that there is a large power bank and multiple computer consoles all connected to that door, but all of them are turned off. So actually, he's talking about things that aren't actually in the frame right now. If we walk over, um, well, first, yeah, that's another tool, so I'll just check that out first. Um, and we walk up. So this is a hacking tool, uh, useful in more complicated technology. <laughs> kind of some spicy dialogue here. <laughs> So it's telling us that we need to uh, repair the power bank to add power back into the system first. So let's get on that. Um, and so this is the power bank right here. Um, these are these consoles, computers, and then this is uh, the door. So if we walk over to the power bank, we see it has an interaction on it to be repaired. So I'm just going to really quick um, use the repair tool, fix this up, just connect all the nodes of the wire, and now we're done. Great job. Now oh, this is more receive power. And we get, uh, okay. Now he notices that the computer consoles are actually locking the door shut. So let's use the new hacking tool to try to bypass them. And we get a little check mark showing that this is actually repaired now. Um, oh, and I see a little part. So Clyde congratulates us. And we only have one left. So that's pretty cool. And if we walk up and see these consoles uh, have the interaction on them. We open that up and we need to hack them. So uh, the hacking tool, how it works, is uh, it says you can't bypass the system. So we need to type into this console to hack my way in. And it just kind of waits here for any input out of this little cursor. As soon as I press a key, we go to this. And every key you press is like 1%. So you basically keep just spam typing until you hit 100%. You know, that's how hacking works, of course. And then we have this little animation. I should close it off. And boom, we're done. Uh, so now, got to unlock, let's get going. And we get another check mark, and now the door is activated as you can see. Let's open it up and walk through. All right, so now we have entered the fifth and final level of the game. And we can see that Clyde is reminding us we only need one more part to go. And telling us to, you know, follow the stairs through the lead. Um, one more thing before I go up. Um, the field of view is a little bit more zoomed out for this level, just because it's uh, bigger and Helpful to be able to see more things at once. Um, so with that out of the way, let's get going. I'm just gonna walk up the stairs, and oh, it looks like I see another tool, I think. And yes, Clyde confirms that and tells us it is a laser cutter, which can you know break and destroy certain things, which is cool. So I'm gonna keep walking up, and oh, I find another artifact. So yep, we see it is uh, some kind of a document. Secret government document, very cool. Um, and he just kind of gives us a brief summary and tells us to check it out, so I'll pick it up and then I'm just gonna open the inventory, hover over it for a short summary, and then click it to view. So it's called Redacted Document Number 448, and I will let you read that really quick. Just pause the video now, and when you're done, resume, and I will just close the inventory. So now I'm gonna walk up and see what the heck is going on up here. Okay, so. Um, Claude seems to be a little confused about what he's seeing. Um, 
Windows. So he's talking about this uh, computer monitor looking thing up here, saying that it used to be a state-of-the-art supercomputer. Um, and letting us know that it kind of seems to be powered like from these tubes on each side, maybe behind the wall or something. And that we can activate them with these levers over here. It tells us to do that, so I'm going to go over to the left first and... Okay, so we see it's blocked by a boulder, but we can actually use the laser cutter to cut through that. So if I activate the interaction, um, you can see the same type of UI up here. Uh, we just simply drag the beam over the cut line, which is this thing, from left to right as accurately and quickly as we can. If we're too far off or too slow, we have to try again. So obviously I can just click escape and then to cancel out of it. Um, and also this uh, cut line is randomly generated, so every time it'll be in a new place. And I simply just click and hold the mouse to draw the laser. You can see some little sparks coming off of it. And I'll just draw it over this line. And that was, I think, a little too slow. That was good, though. Uh, oops, not to write. Um, and then now I can activate this lever by using the interaction key. And we see this tube starts to fill up. And then it reaches that, that half of the supercomputer. Clyde tells us we uh, did a good job. So now I'm going to go to the other side of the room. And the same thing essentially. Uh, he lets us know it's kind of weird that this one's also blocked by a border, but uh, whatever, let's break this one. Okay, same thing here. And then we just activate this lever, and this tube starts to rise. And it powers that half as well. Okay, so it's fully powered. Um, we see a sort of static effect start to go on, and then Clyde really notices it as well and thinks it's glitching. Ah, so we can hack, kind of hack into this and fix the problem, and we can interact with any of these uh, row of computers down here. And then if I just activate that, it's the same thing as before, we just simply spam a bunch of keys to hack this thing. So there we go, that's done. Um, okay, so we see this kind of checkbox, and we also see the static stopped, and he tells us we did a good job. So that's cool, and I'm just gonna wait one second. And okay, now the supercomputer starts talking to us. So we're just gonna play through this really quickly and let you read at your own pace. Oh, by the way, this this uh, what this animation is supposed to be just a little like uh, blinking effect to kind of, I guess, show the is sort of, uh, you know, intelligent. Um, anyways, This here is kind of implying that this thing is much more um, technologically advanced than even this uh, complicated computer system that he is interacting with us through. Um, okay, and here um, he kind of tells us that he can only do one of these two kind of things we want. So he can give us the last part which we need to fix our ship, um, or he can send a message to earth and warn the people there our people um, about what will happen which is the same thing that happened on mars and we have to decide which one we want to do so this is kind of like the final decision that the player has to make which will um, end the game and obviously there are two possible endings um, so i'm going to show both but first i will just choose the quote unquote good um, choice of saving society at the cost of myself so if I just click this button here um, you can see he um, lets us know that he uh, thinks we made a good choice so if we just hit continue now we fade out into uh, another cinematic dialogue and this um, will kind of end off the game and I'm just gonna play through this and you kind of see what happens
And then when that's over, as you can see, we just kind of fade it out back into the main menu. From here, we can play again, exit, or obviously the credits. Um, and yeah, so that is the whole game. But I'm just gonna cut and show you the other possible ending really quick. So I will see you in a second. All right, guys, so I just replayed the game and got back to this point where we have to make the big final decision that determines the ending of the game. And this time we are going to choose the second option, which is the quote unquote worse option. Um, so yeah, if I just click this button to save myself, um, we get some kind of follow up dialogue. So uh, he says this might not have been the best choice for the survival of Earth. Kind of hinting that it's the wrong choice, I guess, but you know, it's subjective. Um, and then he'll he says he'll give us the part we need, and right here it drops on the floor, we can just pick it up, and as soon as I pick this up, we will transition into the uh, alternate end scene, so I'll just do that right now. And there we go, we have a nice fade out. And yes, this is the cinematic dialogue for the, I guess, bad ending, so I will just play that out for you guys really quick and let you read along. same thing here we just fade out back into the main menu again and from here we can again play again or exit get the credits and yeah that is that's pretty much everything and that wraps up our Mars 2088 gameplay walkthrough and commentary we will be sure to keep improving the game in anticipation for the national competition sometime later this spring thank you for your time and attention and have a nice day